Were these made in the rice cooker? Put your guess below and see if you're correct. Chinese Lunar New Year is coming up. Hi there and welcome to Rice Cooker Baking with Life of Pang. And Huey O challenged me to make sesame seed balls in the rice cooker. I've never made them before because I've always been able to buy them for so cheap. So let's see if I can do this challenge. If you don't have a kitchen skill and you're using a measuring cup, make sure you're almost overflowing your water like this here to get the right amount of 60 grams. And as always, the full written recipe is below this video, so make sure you expand the description box to see everything. And you want to mix this until it's smooth and no more lumps, about two to three minutes. Now cover it tightly and let it sit for about five minutes. Add the rest of the flour and it's equivalent to one cup and two tablespoons. Make sure you're almost overflowing your water like this here. Using a spatula, just mix it until a dough is formed. And if you're brand new to my channel, be sure to watch the important tips at the end to be successful in baking in your rice cooker. Be sure that you are scraping the side. I'm rolling my dolls onto the side of the bowl to get the rest of the flour. And I did it for about 4 to 5 minutes. Cover and let it sit for 30 minutes. While we wait, we can make the filling. I'm going to use this canned red bean paste. Measure about one tablespoon or 24 grams each and then shape it into a ball. I did chill mine in the refrigerator overnight so they're easier to roll into a ball. You'll need about eight of them. And we're gonna get the sesame seeds wet. This will help the sesame seeds stick onto our rice ball. Drain it in a fine mesh strainer. And then spread it on a paper towel on a plate. The seeds should be damp but not wet. After 30 minutes, divide your dough into 8 pieces, about 45 grams each. And if you're guesstimating, it's about the size of a golf ball or a ping pong ball. Keep the dough covered so that it doesn't dry out. And flatten the ball in your palm or use a roller on a flat surface. Just making sure the doughs are even all around. Flatten it to about 3 inches. And now fold the dough over the bean paste. And sealing the edges by pinching them together. As you can see, I'm terrible at this. And I did get a little better with each one. The first one was terrible. By the way, this is one of my better rolls. Now gently roll the ball in your hand with very light pressure to get rid of some of the seams. Gently roll the dough in the damp sesame seeds until all the surface are covered. Then gently roll it in your palm to push the seeds deeper into the dough. This last one feels a bit dry. So I'm just going to rub some water on my palm and on the dough itself to prevent it from cracking. And you don't want to overdo this because you will thin out sections of the dough Yes, I did. So I try to take pieces of dough from other area to put it on. Mm -hmm. 
And here are my sesame balls. What do you think? I'm using canola oil. You do want to have enough oil in order to cover your sesame balls. And I just used up my whole bottle. Now press the cook button and wait for the oil to get hot enough. And I can't really tell if my oil is hot enough. So let's do the chopstick test. Take a wooden chopstick and hold it onto the bottom. If you see the oil bubbling, then it's hot enough. After about six minutes, my rice cooker went into the warm status. I'm not gonna put all my sesame balls in. You don't wanna overcrowd them, otherwise the heat may not be strong enough to make them brown. So during this frying time, make sure that you are turning and rolling the sesame balls to prevent it from getting too brown on one side. And if your rice cooker went into the warm status, after about 7 or 10 minutes, push that cook button again to go back into the cook status and increase the heat. Keep repeating this process to add heat as much as possible. And if a certain side is not brown enough, you can turn it towards the heat area, which is the bottom or the side, and hold it gently down with your spatula or tongue. Once they are cooked, they will float to the top. And I did start a timer when I started baking, and so far it's been 45 minutes. Yes, that is the disadvantage. And I'm going to call this done just because I don't think it will get any darker. So far, they look beautiful, aren't they? Not bad at all, eh? For my very first attempt. What do you think? Let me know in the comment below. And look at these. I'm proud of myself. Now for the last three, I want to bake it instead of deep frying it. So I did empty all the oil from the pot, but did not clean it. Now I did set my timer for 30 minutes, but I would say reduce your time and I'll show you why. After 30 minutes, and they look beautiful on top, but they're a little bit dark on the bottom. And this one's stuck, so we'll use a spatula to get this off. And let's go ahead and bake the other side. Again, I did set the timer for 30 minutes, so I would suggest doing the first bake and setting the timer for 10 to 15 minutes, and then flip it, and then set a timer for the second bake on the other side for 20 minutes. And look at how beautiful my first attempt at making sesame balls. Listen to that crispiness. Oh, yummy delicious. It's crunchy on the outside and chewy in the inside. Oh, yummy. As for the baked patties, the outside is a little bit tough, but the inside, still chewy. So there you have it. Yes, you can make sesame balls in a rice cooker. Without the bean paste filling, it is at a fruit sweetness level. And with the bean paste, the sweetness level is somewhere between a fruit and sugar, but not sugary sweet. 